Hello, everyone. Welcome to our final Fed presentation for Team Trust the Process. My name is Dylan Esgit, and today I will be joined by my teammates, Caroline Bredick, Alex Dragic, and Hannah Wynn. To begin our project, our group dove into diverse and fascinating history of our world's bridges. Our team drew inspiration from learning about the evolution of bridges from the timber arches of the Roman Empire to the massive structures such as the Shanghai Lupu Bridge that populate our world today. Also, our team researched the materials typically used during the construction of bridges and examples of bridge failures. From this research, we determined desirable material properties such as compressive and tensile strength for our bridge and we learned about the design mistakes others made so we did not make those same mistakes ourselves. Following our research, we began brainstorming different designs for our bridge. We came up with various designs that could fit the criteria, such as truss bridges that folded, telescoping bridges, and a bridge that can be taken apart into silver pieces. And these are our freehand design sketches. To decide on our design, we created a decision matrix based on five criteria. Creativity, complexity of design, ease of assembly, confidence, and expensive material. The, per the percentage column is how each criteria was weighted based on how important the criteria was in determining the bridge's overall ranking. Through group deliberation, each of the six bridges were rated from one to six within each of the five categories. Using the ratings and assigned weights, we calculated the overall scores of each design, which names are included across the top of the chart. We chose the three highest rated designs, which were the scissor truss, folding bridge, and puzzle designs. We chose the top three because we wanted to have options to pursue in the case we ran into roadblocks. While pursuing the top three designs we had chosen, we discovered that the most difficult aspect of modeling the designs was encompassing the complexities of our more intricate designs. We realized that completing the full model of the scissor truss bridge and the bridge that expands like a Hoberman sphere would take a lot of time and manpower to complete more than would be reasonable within our project timeframe. So we decided to drop our other designs and focus solely on the puzzle bridge. Our initial iterations didn't have pins connecting the segments of the bridge, but we decided to use pins to simplify the design and increase the manufacturability of the final product. For the puzzle bridge, we wanted to create an arc design. So we decided to create an arc that is an, uh, an arch that is an arc segment of a circle for ease of part modeling. Our final design, consisted of nine segments connected by 16 pegs. It met the expanded and collapsed specifications, and it has a load of 60 pounds with a 6.2 safety factor and was modeled with ABS plastic. Here's a pictorial view of our final design in Fusion 360. The center seven pieces have connections for pegs at both ends, while the two end pieces of the bridge have L-bracket supports. Some detailed drawings of each of the parts. Each center segment has a horizontal length of 7.2 inches and a curvature radius of 48 inches. To make efficient use of material, the segments are shelled with the one tenth of an inch thickness or about 2.5 millimeters. The end segments have had the same dimensions as the center segments, except for the L-bracket supports at the end of the piece. The last part is the connecting peg with two holes total, one for each of the bridge segments it joins. For better visualization of the construction, here's a short animation of the exploded assembly of the bridge. Here is a configuration of the bridge when collapsed into one cubic foot. Lastly, we put our final product to the test through simulations. While simulating a 60 pound load, we determined how much stress the bridge would be put under and how much it would be displaced. This first photo shows how much stress the 60 pounds pushed on each square inch of the bridge. The stress is mostly placed on the nine segments themselves and the maximum stress of 465.5 PSI is felt at the connection site of two segments. This next photo shows the displacement that occurs when simulating the 60 pound load. The most displacement occurs at the location of the load in the middle of the bridge and displacement decreases as you go towards the ends of the bridge. The maximum displacement in the middle is by about 0.058 inches, which is just over 1 20th of an inch. For next steps, if we were to further develop this bridge design, we would next create a prototype using a precision deposition 3D printer and ABS plastic as the material. Or if we were to use a slightly more expensive printing process, we could create a prototype using a selective laser centering printer and nylon plastic as the material. If we were to continue to develop this design, we would work on removing material from the current design, in particular the pegs because they are mo modeled as solid ABS 
or we'd we would look to pursue a different design that doesn't require disassembly into multiple pieces. But all in all, we are happy with how the puzzle bridge turned out. Our bridge was very successful at Fed Day as it was, an, as it was awarded an honorable mention by the, by the judges. Some of the judges' comments included positive feedback on our design selection table and our fusion testing. And we also received some positive feedback on our design, specifically our connecting pegs. Some advice we have for next year's freshmen include developing a schedule and sticking to it, as this project is very long and cumbersome and it is easy to get off track fast. We also recommend that the next year's freshmen allot plenty of time for CAD modeling and allot plenty of time for familiarization with the CAD programs. That concludes our final Fed presentation. Thank you for joining us and have a great day.